Um, so I have another question. So I'm going to ask you this question as well. But I'll, first of all, I'll tell you a bit about the two objects I'm interested in. So question, which is heavier? The giant uh, redwood tree or the blue whale? Okay, so before I get you guys to vote on this, I'll tell you a little bit about them, so I'll give you a pl fair playing field here. Okay, so the giant redwood tree, so the one I'm specifically going to think about is the one in this picture, which is General Sherman, that's in the redwood forest in California. So this is the largest known tree on the planet, huge. You can just about see this little person here. That's a person in that picture, so you can see how big this tree is massive. I, I really want to go to this place. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, um, so this is the General Sherman tree. So the question is, is that heavier or is the blue whale heavier? So here's a little cartoon of the blue whale. And to give you some idea of scale here, it's about the length of a basketball court. Uh, there's a little cartoon of a Tyrannosaurus rex dwarfed in comparison to a blue whale. <laughs> Um, there's a little person there, again, just minute in comparison. Uh, here's, a, here's an actual photo of one, and there's a boat, and you can just see these things are, are massive. Okay. So, my question for you guys, I want you to vote on this. So, hands up if you think the redwood tree is heavier. Okay, okay quite a few. Hands up if you think it's the blue whale. Okay, so slight majority for the tree, but it's kind of a bit split. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's do some math and see who's right. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to do an approximation. Okay, so what is an approximation? It's an inexact representation of something that's still close enough to what we actually want to work out that it's useful. And that's the key. It has to be close enough that it's still useful. We don't want to approximate an approximation to be so rough that it just doesn't tell us anything. And so, um, actually, physicists do this all the time, okay? And this is actually a, a, a kind of a physics joke here that often comes up. So when people ask physicists to, okay, tell me, tell me what a cow looks like, they'll say, well, let's just think of it as a sphere. And, uh, and so that's what we'll do. And you may think, oh, come on, cow, sphere, come on, come on. Well, actually, it's not bad, actually. You know, if I actually tried to work out the volume of a cow and I approximated by a sphere, I really wouldn't be that far off. And that's what we're going to use. Okay. So that's what we're going to use to answer this problem about the tree and the whale. So there's my tree. Let's start off with that. Okay. Well, from this angle, the picture, it looks roughly like a cone. If you think about a tree, it has a kind of big trunk and it kind of gets narrower as you get, get to the top. So I'm going to approximate it by a cone. Okay. Okay, you think, mm, no, it's a bit, bit bizarre, but well, let's run with it. Okay, well, we know the height of the tree. That is something we can measure, because we can't just go out and dig up General Sherman and, and put it on some scale. So what, let's use what we know. We know the height. We know the diameter at the base of the tree. Okay. So from that, we can use the formula for the volume of a cone to work out the volume of that tree. Okay. So the formula for the volume of a cone is a third of the height times the area of the base, so that's pi, the radius of the base squared. Okay. So if I multiply all those numbers together, I get 1,760 metres cubed. Okay. So that's a volume. Okay. Right, so, but I actually want the weight. Okay. I want the mass of the, of the tree. So I need to multiply that volume by its density to be able to work out the mass. So let's do that down here. So, okay. so I need to know the, the density of the tree. So that's a bit tricky, right? So how do I work that out? Okay, so what we do is we can compare it to something we know. We know what the density of water is. Density of water is about one gram per milliliter, or in other words, a thousand kilograms per, per meter cubed. So what we can say is, well, let's think about the tree. If I took the tree trunk of the tree, that would probably sink, okay? We can figure that out by comparing it to other trees that we can chop down, okay? And, but if we took the branches higher up the tree, like a log from one of the branches, that would probably float. So what we can say was, well, on average, it's probably about the same density as the water, because some bits would float, some would sink, so on average we can say it's about the same density. So that's, what, that's the approximation I'm going to use. So I'm going to say, right, we've got the volume of the tree times our estimate of the density, and we assume it's the same as water, so that's the density of water there. Just multiply the two together and we get the weight. So from my calculation, I'm predicting the weight of this tree 
is 1.8 times 10 to the 6 kilograms. So 1.8 million kilograms. Huge. Okay. If you if you if you know if you can think in in tons, that's about 1,800 tons. Huge, huge, huge weight. Okay. What about the whale? Okay. Let's do the same thing with the whale. What's a whale look like? Uh, Cylinder, more or less, good enough. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, you know, squish its fins in, we're a cylinder, we'll kind of do. Okay, so let's do the same kind of idea. We know the length of a blue whale, it's about 30 metres long, the length of a basketball court. We know its radius, about 3 metres. Okay, so, um, and again, we can work out the volume of a cylinder. So it's the length times the area of the base, so 30 times the pi r squared there formula. So we get 848 metres cubed for the volume of our whale. Okay, so what about its density? We need to know the density to work out the mass. Well, we can, on the same kind of argument we use for the tree, it's probably not unreasonable to think that a whale actually has, is a similar density to water as well because we, we know it can float and so forth. So, um, so we're going to take the same estimate for density and we'll assume that the whale is also the same density as water. So um, from that, we can multiply our volume and our density together, and we can say, right, well, we're going to estimate that the weight or mass of that blue whale is 8.4 times 10 to the 5 kilograms. So basically, eight, um, 840,000 kilograms. Okay? Um, so let's... So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that we think the, uh, the redwood is going to be way more. So, in actual fact, people have actually been able to weigh the blue whale because they beach themselves on beaches, so people have actually been able to weigh them. And, and its actual estimate is a bit less than what we were predicting, and it's 1.7 times 10 to the 5. So it's about 170 tonnes, um, the blue whale weighs. But that's still a heck of a lot less than our tree. And that's our estimate for the tree when we haven't even accounted for the roots that are under the ground and, and all the leaves on the trees and so forth, which probably count for another 20 to 30% more mass. Okay? So this is even an underestimate of how much that tree weighs. But we're already saying that our blue whale is about a tenth of the weight of that tree. So that tree is huge, and you certainly wouldn't want it falling on your car. So, okay, so... It's a nice simple math, but it got us kind of a long way. And actually being able to calculate the mass of trees is really useful because this is the kind of information people need when they're predicting, for example, um, fire, fire spread and fire risk in forests. So it's actually, calculations like this are actually more useful than you might, might think. Okay, so um, let's have some more questions. Let's have to think about some other things. Okay, well, um, okay, this time I'm going to have a, a, a statement. I'm going to get you to vote on it, whether you think it's true or false. 